In the previous video, by doing some thought experiments, we understood the reason for relativity. And the main reason for relativity is that the speed of light should be constant for different inertial frames. Now in this video, just by keeping this speed of light constant, we will derive this time dilation. Yes, we won't use complex mathematics, no Lorentz transformation. So you don't need to know anything before watching this video to derive time dilation, just some basic trigonometry. And also if you want to understand relativity intuitively, watch the previous video and then watch this video. This will help you understand this video a little better. Now let's understand this diagram. This is simple. This is just an observer O which is at rest with respect to these two mirrors which are L length apart. And this is an observer O dash which is moving with the velocity V in this direction. Now just a little naming convention. These two mirrors are at rest with respect to this observer. So whatever this observer measures for these mirror, that time is called proper time. Okay. Proper time. And these mirrors are moving with respect to this observer. You will see that in the next diagram. And whatever this observer will measure, that is called improper time. Now, due to relativity, these proper time and improper time are not same for a same event. And that is simply called time dilation. Now we will derive this time dilation just by chunking the speed of light in this experiment and we will measure that speed from these two observers and we'll see time dilation. Okay, so now let's look at these mirrors from this observer. Let us say there is a flash of light in here which like shoots a ray in this direction. So a ray like this goes in this direction and then it comes back in this direction. So speed of light C for this observer is simply this distance that is 2L and time taken by light that is delta T. This delta T is the proper time. Always remember that. Okay, so the speed of light C is this one which is 3 into 10 raised power 8 meter per second and this is a constant won't change for this and this observer. Now let's look at these two mirrors from this observer. Now for this observer O dash, this observer O is moving with a speed V in this direction and these mirrors are also moving with speed V in this direction. So what will happen to the flash of light for this observer? When the flash of light will start from here, the above mirror will also be like in here. So the flash of light started and these mirrors are also moving. So whenever the flash of light hits the above mirror, it will be a little forward in space for this observer. So it will hit in here and similarly in here. So the light will travel a path like this. Okay. So intuitively you can see this from here that this path traveled by light is greater than this path traveled by light. So this distance is increased in the second frame. So to keep the C constant, this time should also increase. So whatever the improper time is, it should be greater than this proper time. So delta t dash i am showing improper time with this dash symbol is equal to some factor gamma multiply by delta t okay and this factor is greater than one that means delta t dash should be greater than delta t this is simply the time dilation formula now we will evaluate this gamma factor simply now for that we will just use some basic trigonometry so just making a simple right angle triangle in here. Okay. Now this distance is V delta T dash for this observer. It is the distance traveled by the mirrors in delta T dash time. That is the time taken by light to follow this path. Okay. So half of this, half of this is divided by 2. Now this perpendicular is simply L because these mirrors are L length apart. 
now we have to find this hypotenuse which is a really good exercise for a 8th class student so now the speed of light c is equal to 2 times because this is 2 times square root of l square plus v delta t dash divided by 2 square divided by delta t dash okay so now we will just simplify it and derive the time dilation formula take this delta t dash in here and 2 in here so we get c delta t dash divided by 2 is equal to square root of l square plus v delta t dash divided by 2 whole square now squaring both sides give us c delta t dash divided by 2 whole square this square root goes out now l square plus v delta t divided by 2 whole square this is t dash now we will just take this one in here so c delta t dash divided by 2 whole square minus v delta t dash divided by 2 whole square is equal to l square now just take this delta t dash by 2 common its square so delta t dash divided by 2 whole square c square minus v square is equal to l square now let's do the further simplification delta t dash divided by 2 is equal to whole square is equal to l square divided by c square minus v square now simply take this c square common so delta t dash divided by 2 is equal to l square divided by c square 1 here is 1 minus v square upon c square we just multiply and divide it by c square and the c square on the numerator goes out now taking square root on both sides delta t dash this 2 goes in here 2 l square becomes l c square becomes c divided by square root of 1 minus v square upon c square now look closely this 2 l by c is something familiar if we take this delta t in here we get delta t is equal to 2 l divided by c so we will get expression between delta t and delta t dash so chunking delta t for this in here we'll just erase this and write delta t so now delta t dash is gamma times delta t and gamma gamma is equal to 1 upon under root of 1 minus v square upon c square and this factor is greater than 1 that means delta t dash is greater than delta t the improper time is greater than the proper time by a factor gamma which is 1 upon under root 1 minus v square upon c square now the conclusion of this is that the cloak of this observer will run slower compared to this observer now time is not absolute it's relative so the clock is slower with respect to this observer okay it's with respect there is no absolute time so this is how we derive time dilation just by saying that the speed of light is constant so thanks for watching this video do watch the previous video if you want to understand relativity the right way and share this video to support this channel and always remember that math is everything